Welcome to the course, Culturally Responsive Built Environments. Today, we are going to talk about City Hildai Plan of Badami in Karnataka. In our previous lecture, we did discuss about the role of UNESCO, the ICOMOS, IUCN, how the heritage properties are nominated and how they have been analyzed and how the tentative list will be prepared. But coming to the national and uh, how each nation is looking at culture, how to integrate culture in the development process and how various domains like planning, urban design, architecture, engineering, how they come together to contribute for the cultural heritage and uh, how it can be integrated in the planning process. Before getting into Badami or anything, I would like to introduce the scheme which is uh, talks about the heritage, it is called Hildai scheme, the heritage city development and augmentation yojana, which is actually launched the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Uh, government of India have launched this particular National Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana, which is in short form, we call it as a Hridai, on 21st January 2015, with a focus of development of holistic development of heritage cities. So, the main aim of this scheme, which is to preserve and revitalize soul of the heritage city, to reflect the city's unique character by encouraging aesthetically appealing, accessible, informative and secured environment. In fact, you know, India is a country which is known for its rich cultural layers and it dates back to much of the pre-Paleolithic period till till the recent uh, Islamic and even the colonial influences. So, each city is, uh, there are many cities around the uh, Indian subcontinent which are known for its historic influences, which are known for its historic contributions. So, uh, in fact, this is the website, I am just giving you a link of uh, Hridai India and you can see and the various uh, list of cities, about 12 cities which are preferred under the Hridai program. So, they have allocated certain budget to undertake this particular Hildai uh, scheme in these selected cities. So, what is the scheme statement? It is preserve, to preserve and revitalize soul of heritage city, to reflect the city's unique character by encouraging aesthetically appealing, accessible, informative and secured environment to undertake strategic and planned development. So, this is the the follow-up activity of, so the main motto is to preserve and revitalize these historic cities, but through the strategic and planned development of heritage cities, aiming at improvement in overall quality of life with specific focus on sanitation, security, tourism, heritage revitalization and livelihoods retaining to cities cultural identity. We, if we ask whether we are going for any tourism aspect or any holiday or any uh, educational trip or you know, so we always certain places offer you certain potentials, you know, that actually poses some preferences in your mind. Yes, this place is uh, well manageable, we can go there, we can understand some place, we can live there comfortably. So that is how people normally tend and what make them to take these kind of decisions. Uh, the important part is the information, the first very first aspect is the information. So what information is accessible to them? Through that one can learn where do they live once they go there and how do they go how they reach there. So, even each and every transportable link is also a part of the process, you know, how it can envisage certain decision making process and how it can attract the tourist and as well as, and it is a two way process. On one side, it is this particular place is offering, it is elevated it with its all its potentials and it is taking a word back, whoever are coming to these places, it is telling about a particular uh, story and a series of stories and 
uh, it could be a form of a myths, it could be form of a traditions, it could be more form of a intangible and tangible uh, forms of you know uh, the living. So how uh, it has a transmission to the future generations. So uh, I'll just briefly tell you about or read out the what are the main objectives of this Hridayi scheme in order to preserve the character of the soul of heritage city and how it could uh, refer to an inclusive heritage de linked urban development. So number one, the planning, development and implementation of heritage sensitive infrastructure, service delivery and infrastructure provision in historic city course. Because many of the historic city course, so one of the common issues will be the water supply, sanitation and even to accommodate anything else, especially parking. You know, so there's all the service provisions, how it fails and then how it deteriorates the conditions. Preserve and revitalize heritage wherein tourists can connect directly with city's unique character. Develop and document a heritage asset inventory of cities, including natural, cultural, living and built heritage as a basis of urban planning, growth and service provision. See, in all these things, it is not just only talking from the, uh, a culture point of it. It is about talking about the operations and the maintenance part of it. Um, that is where the service provision is very much linked and the delivery part of it. So the implementation and enhancement of basic services delivery with a focus on sanitation services, public convenience, toilets, water taps, street lights, with use of latest technologies in improving tourist facilities and amenities. When I used to live in abroad for a long time, so wherever the places we've been there, you know, we still, we never felt something about many of the places, we never felt an insecured uh, position, especially when we travel with family and we with kids. So how does it, they achieve this particular sense of security? Because sense of some kind of liability, because I know I, the clear information is available for me, how I can procure an accommodation for that time period and what are the routes which I should travel to uh, get an idea of that place. So everything is available and what I should do and what I should not do and you know so all these things are laid out and also the clean and hygienic atmospheres. So in many of the uh, countries in Asia and some of the African places also, so this uh, lack of uh, certain importance on the significance of these cultural assets among the civic and how they take this as a responsibility to maintain and to offer uh, as a kind of cultural economies because these are the places as a cultural economies. So, it is not just only the cultural asset which has to provide, it is a whole community, it is a whole, the civ it is a civic uh, understanding towards that asset and how they facilitate it. So, local capacity enhancement for inclusive heritage based industry and creative effective linkages between tourism and cultural facilities, also the conservation of natural and built heritage. So, here we please understand that the tourist potential the religious potential and the cultural facilities, you know, they very, they have a thin margins. Like if you go there, sometimes they overlap, but sometimes they also have impact on one over the other. Like for example, in Sri Rangam case, we can see that they did had an impact, how the religious tourism has in time have taken more into the tourist based economies. Urban heritage, adaptive rehabilitation, maintenance, including appropriate technologies for historic buildings. So how we can retrofit those? This is where the conservation becomes a larger umbrella. Establish and manage effective public-private partnerships. So it is not only the government who talks about how the private and public can come together for adaptive urban rehabilitation. And development and promotion of core tangible economic activities. So it is to do anything obviously there is also to directly to do with the economic regeneration of that region and avenues of livelihoods among stakeholders. So for that you also have to talk about the skill development, you know how we can envisage and encourage this, uh, the lost traditions and the skills and the craftsmen. So there are also these cities how we can make 
these cities informative with modern use of ICT technologies. Nowadays, you go to Kerala, you see that whole the VR technologies and uh, using virtual reality. So one can experience, give kind of immersive experiences of these places. Like also the universal uh, accessibility, how these heritage places could be accessible for old and differently able people. So what kind of provisions we need to give. So that is again a separate subject uh, altogether in the uh, subject of transportation, urban design and planning. And also the remote sensing techniques, you know, how we can map them, how we can uh, look at the GIS mapping of the historical locations and how the statistical data can also be brought into the, um, uh, the remote sensing and the GIS uh, uh, tools and techniques and how they can be visualized. So, for example, I was talking about uh, the accessibility. There are some kind of generic guidelines of accessible monuments under ASI, which is called GAMASI. And this is again uh, Ministry of Tourism and Government of India. How we can provide the footpaths, how we can provide the, um, the lawns, how we can provide the accessible toilets, how we can provide the curb heights, you know. So all these are laid out as a kind of instrumental toolkits. But still there is a challenge because being a heritage, obviously the hurdle comes between the heritage aspect of uh, what to touch and what not to touch. So in the Hilda cities, these are the first 12 cities which are uh, working on this scheme. Ajmer, Amravati, Amritsar, Badami, Dwarka, Gaya, Velankini in Tamil Nadu, Varangal, Varanasi, Puri, Kanchipuram and Madura. So, let us see of one city so that you will understand how it is uh, uh, done and in fact we talk about Badami, this is in located in the Bagalkot district so in the Karnataka and uh, in fact uh, uh, first of all I have to thank one of my students Raghavinder Katimani who has been part of this particular project and in the scheme and through him I also learnt a lot of uh, work which they have already implemented and later on I started reading about the report and this is the whole lecture which was prepared based on the report which is available online from the Hildai website. So this particular Badami is actually known as Vatapi and this is late from 5th to 17th cent uh, 7th centuries of the Badami Chalukyas, the Chalukyan cap earlier Chalukyan capital. And it is, no, it is famous for its kind of rock uh, cut caves as well as some of the uh, temples of Patricol which is also listed in the UNESCO World Heritage Site and there are also some other remote sites which are not listed which are in the tentative processes. So I am referring to this particular 2015 report which is developed with the Indian Heritage uh, Cities Network Foundation IHCNF and ICLAI. Under the Hildai scheme, they actually documented the whole process of how we can identify it and how we can develop a plan, you know, to protect this kind of heritage. So, Badami, apart from the rich uh, tangible uh, heritage, it is also known for its intangible, like uh, they call it as a Shakar Gumbe, which is uh, nothing but the sugar, sugar dolls produced locally and uh, they also talk about the kind of various blankets, hand painted uh, stage backdrops, leather puppets. So, there is a variety of intangible and the cultural economies do exist in that region. So I uh, thank these uh, project team who all actually worked and I was actually fortunate to be he'd been my student so I get to know all the work process how they have what challenges they had faced and uh, in detail. So the city Hilda plan offers an overall vision for the future heritage based development of Badami and associated heritage sites in the surrounding area. So it is not just only that core area but it is also how the association uh, associated heritage sites. So it provides as a city level as well as a heritage area zone level infrastructure assessment. So first they like to they have looked at the what is the kind of status of it and broadly focusing on four areas physical infrastructure, institutional infrastructure, economic infrastructure, social infrastructure for reviving and revitalizing the soul of heritage city.
So in fact, they have made a kind of defined certain heritage zones and some of these uh, about uh, one is the Agatha Tidda Tam cluster of monuments and fort and then you have the old historic core of Badami with its vernacular houses and fort remains. And at the same time, we have uh, the little further down, we have the Bana Shankri temple and we have Nanganada Kolla temple and the Hosha Mahakuta temple and you have Hale Mahakuta temple and Shiddipada prehistoric rock shelter. So basically, uh, this is the four, the six assets which they have defined these boundaries and, and then initially what uh, I'm just projecting how a project operates because everything has to do with money. And these heritage zones of all the four, they have listed out what are the various, I mean, after the doing the survey and assessment. So what are the proposals they are looking at and how much is the estimated project and how much is enough for the funding from under the Hildai scheme. So on a overall, you can see that uh, zone wise, this is the estimated cost for shelf of projects uh, and this is what uh, approved so we still I think uh, some other channels could be worked out on how we can enhance with the funding opportunities. So when we talk about the cultural and tourism sets of Badami first of all they are one focus though I may not be showing everything in this particular lecture but I can show you briefly about how in the town level area level how the two components are there one is the heritage core and the other one is the historic settlement so some of it will have the uh, kind of uh, uh, vernacular houses and the prehistoric settlements. So you have this is recognized as a historic settlement core and you have the protected monuments here and the heritage, the, even the Agastya Lake. So this is how uh, this has been zoned out. But then the defined, uh, there's a kind of for zone one, there is a delineation of Hildai zone, I mean uh, heritage zone for Hildai project. So they've identified which are the monuments, which are the open spaces, which are the gardens under the ASI, which are the road network, which are the building footprint, you know, so uh, what kind of uh, trail which has to the Mahakuta trail up above the rock shelters. And so once they started looking at it, so they've also looked at the kind of you know, what are the difficulties, what are the crucial issues that these particular zones uh, do have, at which we call also the existing vulnerable conditions. In fact, uh, one of these, uh, most of the listed assets around the Agastya Tidda tank have to be approved through a narrow and congestible streets and lanes of the settlement. So basically, we have a very narrow lanes and they have to be approached through the settlement. And the potential open spaces are neglected or being used for open difficulty. You can see that, you know, how people are misusing those because they're not appropriate maintenance activities, not proper care has been taken. And no proper access to the lake through the band for the tourists. So even to the lake, you know, there's no proper access defined. So no proper outlet for the lake, which results in flooding during the rains. So the whole area, you know, the how uh, during the flood seasons, how of outlet has to be provided. Similarly, there are issues like open defecation, sanitation issues. And uh, though Badami is an attraction for this kind of caves, the other listed assets in the north and south are not visited. So the, there is a lack of uh, probably information or it could be a lack of visibility. So less number of people do visit with the other sites. The ecological area behind the caves or below the southern are not identified and recognized for the natural significance and falls outside the area of special control or its regulations. So that is where the difference between the heritage and and the house is abutting the band of Agastya Tirtha. So you know how there's a variety of issues, you know, the connectivity issues, the water supply and sanitation issues, the passage issues, the open defecation issues. So there's, uh, uh, and all these issues are, in fact, there are 23 wards. The Badami Council has been developed in 23 wards. Out of its three of the wards are in the heritage zone. In fact, uh, they did uh, the procedure. They looked at what are the public toilets, 
and the drinking the service infrastructure the drains parking seating electrical lighting signage solid waste so then you know the needed improvements and whereas available not available you know this this is how they looked at and apart from that they looked at the score analysis which talks about the strength challenges opportunities and risks so in fact uh, what are the strengths a strong natural st setting and the visual identity and the natural heritage of this place includes the nearby hills flora and fauna so you know like that there is a monuments and how they are op overlapping layers from chalukyan time to the vijayanagara time so there is lot of challenges in fact uh, poor access access issues lack of tourism infrastructure even a proper toilet or a cafeteria or a parking area so you know like that there are a series of and the banks and guards of agat satyadha tank extensively used and frequented by the locals for washing and collecting water for uh, household and polluting the water so if you look at the quality of water the issue is not only here it goes back to the nearby villages so that is how uh, they started analyzing and what are the various uh, opportunities you know how these existing walk trails to the mahakuta and shidripada can actually develop some kind of heritage tracks or any other routes you know how these there are some potentials how we can improve and at the same time there are some also some risks you know there's no absence of heritage regulations uh, and how they are implemented and there is no prop lack proper control of commercialization process due to enhanced tourism activities leading to demolition of vernacular housing stock inadequate parking facilities again is a common problem so in fact uh, if you look at the historic layers or in the historic uh, settlement of badami so one can uh, look at this is all the 4th century and the 14th century and the agastyadha so so uh, then they started uh, after a, a series of surveys and assessments of each zone then the delineation of these uh, particular zones like now in the first zone they classified what are the strengths uh, challenges opportunities and risks and then they looked at making a boundaries of these and identify the potential assets and what is the problem and uh, starting from a connectivity issue to the infrastructure and the street furniture issue and this is how the second zone uh, will talk about the the historic settlement zone and uh, here also you know how the mapping of Uh, the same infrastructure gap analysis has been done and uh, you know how these local the similar issues are there about the sanitation issues the service issues solid waste management is also an issue and how the poor maintenance of these open space networks so all these even the boundaries you know boundaries of the heritage areas how they are not properly maintained and how they are creating an unhygienic environments so after this whole uh, survey uh, in fact uh, i'm just showing you just the two heritage zones if you look at it uh, a proper analysis what happens here may not an reason just what is happening there it could be from somewhere else you know where this particular leg when they talked about the water quality of the agastyadha tank because no one bothered about uh, what kind of quality what kind of flora what kind of fauna and what kind of you know uh, activities do take place so but if you look at the nearby villages of which are actually indirectly causing degradation of this water because they are using it for various purposes so based on their analysis they looked at in the heritage zone one they looked at the these are the three objectives they focused on maintaining water quality of agastyadha tank ensuring sustainable use of water present in the tank and improving hygienic conditions of adjoining villa of tatekote so basically to do something here you need to look at somewhere there which is also the root cause so that is where they like to, they try to analyze the kind of uh, uh, the water patterns the drainage patterns and then uh, how we can establish uh, we can propose surface drainage channels and as well as some of the wash pens areas how we can propose these wash pens uh, the uh, brief details has been given in the report so you know in that way certain uh, different uh, how they can reroute the water channels and how they can use it for 
the irrigation purposes in the ASI gardens, reuse it. So in that way, this whole, you know, what is the capacity of the waters to be needed for them and what goes in the wastage and how they can be recycled. So all this is a, this is where the irrigation experts also I mean, uh, the, their feedback is also very much important. What is needed for when and how much. So, apart from that, uh, they also have proposed uh, further developments of, for instance, there is, uh, along the guards, there are some existing old houses here. And uh, this has also become a kind of uh, a barrier in some aspects, how we can promote tourism for it. So, in that way, they also proposed uh, this area of the proposed cultural park. And uh, the whole guard setting is here and an ASI site museum and uh, they also proposed archaeological park. So this is how uh, proposals were made. In fact, uh, some of the detailed proposals which they talked about because there were about 68 houses encroaching the tank band. So they tried to relocate, I mean they are proposing to relocate these houses and out of which they qualify, some of the four houses were qualified for adaptive reuse. So that is one uh, level and the second one is the protection and the restoration of stabilization of fort wall remains, bastions and existing walkways along the band. So how, you know, how they can provide a continuity in the walkways. The socio-economic sustainable adaptive reuse plan for existing rooms of the east wing of the municipal school to create facility workshop exhibition, art gallery, toilets, information center, and including the landscape. So an improvement of the stage, restoration and adaptive uh, reuse plan, you know, for some vernacular houses situated in. So basically uh, these four houses, how they could be put in adaptive reuse, how they could be uh, planned, I mean, how an intermediate, the open air theater, small open air theater could be planned out and a stage could be so here if you look at um, there's a lma temple complex on this so each and every detail has been looked at it and it has been assessed and they were suggesting to how we can improve this place so in that way it can integrate it within that setting and, um, and apart from that a uh, small bit of it. There is also, if you are looking much beyond the city, so they also looked at the what are the priority streets for facade because based on the way the vehicular traffic comes and how they are traveling within the city, so that how that city also should give a proper feeling to, and it, it, it should also mention a unique character of that particular historic reflections, the cultural heritage. So in that way they looked at uh, the priorities of the streets and how their facades could be improved. And if you look at uh, what kind of uh, buildings, if you see the which of the buildings could be selected for uh, the restoration part and which of routes we can enhance for so that it can attract the tourists, it can give you a good appeal for the people who are visiting the city, not just only the monuments or the caves. So uh, finally they talked about the salage treatment, Tatakota village as I discussed with you, the cultural park and the Agastitida lake walkway and they also proposed some uh, site on the other side, uh, light and sound show and the archaeological and nature park, water supply, sewerage, rehabilitation, solid waste management, underground power because in many places you know the whole cities are all fully uh, with the telephone lines, with the electric lines, it gives a very messy look. So how we can reroute them, maybe possibly uh, putting them in the underground power and telephone network and also the parking and road signages where to park how to go so the signages itself is a big uh, issue when you go to these kind of small cities and the how the facades of the streets has to be de developed so the, and the, including the landscaping so like that there's a list of things and they also looked at as i discussed with you the budget required and what they have and so uh, uh following uh, 
they kind of uh, they come up with a kind of toolkits you know urban guideline toolkits so how it can actually delineate the heritage areas between so earlier there were only the pockets of these buildings but now if you look at the proper assessment they improved uh, as per their monuments you know the existing monuments and the kind of buffer zones like for example for protected monuments 100 meters no construction and prohibited area and for the 200 meters a regulated area whereas unprotected mo monuments 100 meter can become no construction and prohibited area for any uh, renovation municipal approval need to be provided so like that they have been referred with some kind of buffer zones and the setbacks and no construction zones and the heritage structures so obviously when we talk about that will this will have the regulation of buffer no construction zone and setback so similarly because once the zone is identified automatically these rules will come upon and also the conservation of visibility of important structures so tomorrow if you are constructing a tall building obviously if it is if it is obstructing the visual aspect of that particular heritage assets so obviously the municipality has a every power to deny it and uh, so in that way leaves no construction of any kind of structure above 5 meters including mobile towers water tanks antenna stairwells so it also talks about the height restrictions the control regulations and the zone 1 and 2 will only have single story buildings so uh, they identified the roles for pedestrian activity and only single story story buildings will be allowed facing the street without any exception so like that they have put some kind of guidelines you know and also the building height building guidelines toolkit which talks about the building height the fronts and backs how they have to be aligned and how their ridge how their roof springing line how the veranda levels how the window sill levels they should having a continuing format so that they represent a unique character so in fact uh, for a good example how the fascia soffits also should have a, a a series of continuity i mean this goes back to the urban design aspects into it urban design and the architectural controls and similarly the color palettes what colors we should use and what material we should use so that it reflects the harmony in that setting so i think uh, for this it is okay to if you can understand how Uh, a scheme which talks not just only the heritage as a building but as a city and how the retrofitting aspects should reflect back from planning to the management the operational aspect who will does it and how they do it what areas they should cover you know all this is a com a kind of comprehensive uh, planning approach thank you very much